Just behind me is a 2005 Bentley Continental GT with 550 horsepower out of a twin turbo 12 cylinder engine that I paid $400 for. I'm gonna tell you how I paid $400 for it later in this video. Today's video, I'm gonna sell this thing. I'm gonna sell it, I'm ready to let it go. I've had a great time, but now I have an Aston Martin to replace it. Today's gonna be a fun video. Let's see if we can get rid of this thing finally. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Let's get going. So hey, welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel and flipping $400 into a Ferrari. Over a year ago, I decided, hey, I wanna buy a Ferrari, but I don't wanna buy a Ferrari. I don't wanna pay for a Ferrari. How can I start a Ferrari? Well, I'm gonna take $400 and I'm gonna buy a car, fix a car, clean a car, sell a car, until I eventually have enough money to afford a Ferrari off that initial $400 investment. This Bentley is part of that process and most of you guys already know that, so I'm not gonna dig into the whole history of the Ferrari Flip Series. If you wanna learn more, you can watch the whole playlist at the end of this video. This Bentley, I bought last September. It is now almost May, meaning I've had this car like seven months-ish, and it's been fun. But I also have this Audi A8L that was my winter car. So I bought this Bentley thinking, hey, this is gonna be a fun car for the Ferrari Flip Series. The problem was I bought it right before winter in New Hampshire, and who the heck needs a Bentley, number one, in New Hampshire. Nobody, I've never seen a Bentley in New Hampshire. Number two, who's gonna be buying a Bentley before or during winter in New Hampshire? Nobody, clearly, nobody. But winter's over, and in today's video, we're gonna get it ready for sale. We're gonna show you all the problems I've had, everything I had to do to fix it, how much it cost us to fix it, and what I had to do to clean it and get it ready for sale, and then hopefully, actually sell it. I'm gonna learn how to ceramic coat too. So I, I have some ceramic coat product that, thanks to Avalon King and Armor Shield, which we will be giving away. So we're gonna have another giveaway in this video somewhere in the middle. And at the end, we'll tell you how and what we sold this car for because it actually did sell. So this Bentley kind of just sat all winter long in and out of the garage. Snowy days, I took it because it weighs 5,500 pounds and it's all wheel drive. So it was amazing in the snow and a lot of fun. But it has some weird quirky things to it that took me a while to learn how it works and like things that I just really didn't like but I can tell you like the fit and finish of this car is amazing this is real leather and it's like thick and it smells like a gentleman's car in here we have solid hardwood and real metal buttons and bezels and it's just a beautiful car now the interior is pretty dated you want to know how dated it is I'll show you how dated it is it has a miniature cell phone and an original Bluetooth device, so somehow. I don't even know how that works. Let's see if this goes down, perfect. Now, because I've owned this car for seven months and I daily drove for two weeks, it's dirty. It has some weird quirky things that need to be fixed. Today, we're gonna fix them, and then we're gonna try to list it on cars and bids to see if we can make any money. Hopefully, cars and bids is where it's at. We can get rid of it. Wheels are dirty, body's dirty. I'm gonna fix down here too today and get this thing ready for sale. I'm gonna put it up on cars and bids. Look at how intricate these floor mats are. You even have to turn this to get the floor mats out because they lock in place. This is actually my favorite part about working on a car. I love detailing cars. That Typhoon right there is one of my best friends. It is a high pressure air gun that just, I can fit it everywhere and it blows everything out of my car all the time. It even loosens up dirt out of carpets and stuff. I actually have a link in the description down below to my Amazon store. I think there's like a link to that somewhere if anyone's interested because they work really well. I use it on every single car, especially like underneath the seats. If you look down there, how I spray underneath the seats, it works amazingly. And then I can vacuum it up afterward. So now that all the dirt is like free and pulled up to the top, I can vacuum it all out and then uh, it just makes the job a lot quicker. The trunks I like to do in a pattern, so I'll get the whole trunk, I'll vacuum everything out, and then I vacuum in, in lines, like one forward, one back, one forward, one back. So when you look at it when I'm finished, you'll see some nice satisfying lines. I use some plastic matting that I put on all my carpets anytime I use a car. They look great in my cars for sale, and it also protects all the floors, so I had those in all winter, and it kind of kept the mats in pretty decent shape. The only problem is if you keep them on too long, they stuck together like you saw before. Now I can vacuum the mats, shake them out, and get them ready for paint. A little fabric dye goes a long way. Watch this. I'm gonna soak it. Here you go. Nice, brand new clean carpets. Coolest part about this Bentley, 
over everything is how the hood opens. When you lift it here, the B on the Bentley wings pop up. And that's how you open the hood. And I get to see my W12 twin turbo. I'm gonna say this right now for everybody. Be careful when you're spraying your engine down with water. You really don't wanna soak any electrical components. You, you really have to watch out what you're doing because you can damage some stuff. I like to spray a degreaser on everything and then I give it a good, good, good scrubbing. And then just give it a light rinse and remember just be careful what you're rinsing off. Then I take some high pressure air, dry everything off, get it out of there so you don't have puddles of water sitting everywhere. After that, it gets shined. Let's make this thing look brand new, yes. That is tire shine. I spray it on all the plastics, it looks great, and then I give it a nice little wipe down with like a foam pad right after all this is over with. See, and now the plastic looks brand new again. This is one of my favorite parts about cleaning and detailing a car. I love cleaning wheels. I like spraying the tires and scrubbing them down. I like seeing the brown come up on the sidewalls because I know it's getting clean. Scrubbing in between the spokes and then rinsing it off to seeing a nice clean silver finish is just awesome for me. Once the wheels were finished, we did a hand wash and then an iron off scrub where we got everything off and, and even did a clay bar so we try to bring it right back down to the paint with no imperfections and, and no particles on the paint or body. We have three ways of drying off a car. We could use a chamois. The squeegee always works really, really well for me. It's very satisfying, actually, I enjoy doing that. And then the third is we can air dry it with like a blower, high pressure air gun, or like an actual leaf blower that works really, really well too. That's my preferred method, but I didn't have my leaf blower with me. I actually think I even have one of these squeegees in my Amazon cart, so if you click on the link in the description, you can find this as well. All right, giveaway time. I'm gonna start giving away products that people send to me. So we're gonna try them out, see how they work, and then I'm gonna give them away to you guys. So this company, Avalon King, sent me two boxes of Armor Shield IX Nano Ceramic Coating. So this is a DIY ceramic coating product. I don't know a lot about this yet, so I'm gonna read into it and flash back in just about right now. All right, I think we have our pad on. Now we're going to try one section at a time. I've never tried a ceramic coating myself, so I was really excited to try this product out. It's supposed to be easy enough for anybody to use. You just put a couple dabs on the cloth on the block and just spread it on evenly. It's supposed to create a shine and deep gloss, easier to wash, water beading, also protects against bugs and other road debris. Once you apply it, you just let it sit. It sets itself and when it starts to flash, you can wipe it off just like you would like a wax coating spot right here that's all faded. I'm curious to see how that comes out. The reason people would want to use a ceramic coat over a wax is because it's water repellent, UV resistant, and it protects against anything from binding to your paint of your car. It's supposed to provide the highest grade of protection and gloss to enhance your vehicle, unlike traditional waxes and other types of sealants. Now I can feel it's significantly smoother. That's it, about an hour's worth of work. I'll let it harden, I'll let it dry. I'm gonna try to wash it in a day or two to really see if it beads up or how this stuff works. Giveaway, I'm giving this stuff away. Avalon King Armor Shield IX. All you have to do is three easy things. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you have not yet subscribed, and comment down below Armor Shield. That's it, I'm gonna pick a random winner. I'll mail this to you and it's all yours. Now if you aren't the winner, and you want to buy this Armor Shield ceramic coating yourself, there's a link right in the description down below, first line. So make sure to go check out Armor Shield Nano Ceramic Coating. Thank you so much. This stuff is cool. Appreciate it, Avalon King, for sending this stuff out. So we're going to do some services on the Bentley. So this is the oil filter for a Volkswagen Phaeton W12, and I think a Bentley Continental GT. We're also doing the remote batteries, we're doing the main battery or the starting battery because there's two batteries in the car. Clearing the service light after we do the oil change. And then a couple other items that we're gonna do too and then it's good, done, finished. So the car is complete, it's finished, it's looking beautiful. 
We're gonna go take some photos of it so I can list it up on Cars and Bids. Now I haven't even looked at Cars and Bids yet. I don't know if I need the approval, like, like bring a trailer has to approve me to list a car. I don't know if I just list it like eBay or what. So we're gonna get some photos of it first and we can take some pictures of like any imperfections and also some great hero shots of the car. And then we can go to Cars and Bids and see if we can list it up for sale and try to sell this thing. One of the coolest things about this car, so it's a W12 cylinder, 12 cylinder W, kind of like that, I guess. And it's a twin turbo with 550 horsepower and all wheel drive. You'd think it would be like a ripper, but it's not. It's weirdly smooth fast. Like it's crazy fast. It'll whip my head in the back, but it's really, really smooth. Like it doesn't roar like a Mustang or a Corvette, obviously, because it's not. The only thing that's bumming me out is this chrome piece fell off. Luckily, it fell off in my driveway. I just forgot to bring it into work today. So we're gonna photograph everything we can, minus this little section right here. Tomorrow, I'll put the trim piece back on, good as new. The next day. And now it's time to put this chrome molding that fell off back on. Luckily, I found it, because I don't know where the heck I would find a replacement chrome metal, steel or metal molding to put back on this car. Here's the piece where the trim was missing. You can see that's all double-sided tape right there. Right here, I have a rubber wheel. And this rubber wheel spins fast and removes pinstriping, double-sided tape, all kinds of debris from cars. It works really well and it's quick and efficient. It works pretty easily. All I do is hook it up to the drill and I just let it spin on its own and it pulls the double-sided tape right off the car or whatever product you're using. It also works on pinstriping. So this stuff is a good, it's a good tool to have. While we're on the topic, this Yukon has some funny pinstriping too. I don't know who MS is, but she's gonna be gone in a minute. And then we'll buff that little spot. I mean, we have to buff the car anyway, but now it's gone. So you can see I just left some, uh, some tape just to hold the trim in place while everything really adheres and kind of cures. I also put some adhesive, like some uh, silicone adhesive back there as well to really hold it in place. So I think we are completely finished. Now here's the thing with the Bentley. It has 118,501 miles. That is a lot of miles for the Bentley. Honestly, I've had this for whatever, however long, seven months. It starts every single time and it's comfortable and it's reliable and it's smooth. It came from Florida. It's been daily driven. Obviously it was used as a regular vehicle down in Florida. It's never let me down. I love it. It's annoying. There's some annoying things, but I love it. The thing I hate about it is the buyers. Like obviously Facebook Marketplace is not the appropriate place to be posting this. And I can't tell you how many is this available. I mean like in the thousands with offers of just like stupid, stupid, stupid offers that are just like, now at this point I probably have a two star rating on Facebook because I have Zero freaking patience for people. Can you finance me? I have a 400 credit score. Will you do buy here, pay here? Can I make weekly payments? Do you like, dude, if you need to do any of that, you should be buying yourself a freaking Camry, not a Bentley. And I'm not knocking you. I'm just like common financial sense. Just have some. But I guess if you have a 400 credit score or you're thinking about making weekly payments on a Bentley, you don't have financial sense. So whatever. So I've had it for sale for seven months. I have had thousands of messages and emails, not a single phone call, just tons of like, what's what's my WhatsApp phone number type messages. The next day. Bentley day, and one of you guys has significantly helped me in the comments section. So this Bentley, I did a few weeks ago, I did, can you daily drive a Bentley Continental GT for two weeks? You guys stepped it up and hooked me up. I wanna show you one of the weird, quirky things, aside from this window right here, that was annoying me about this Bentley. So here's the key. And when you turn the car on, I have to turn it left and then turn it right to start. Let's try that again. You'll see low battery, please start engine. Well, I've tested the battery a dozen times. I can't figure out why it's been tested and it still says low battery because you guys told me a trick. Now watch this. I have to turn it left and then turn it right to start the car, you f 
Okay, I'm just gonna fix the problem. I'm gonna tell you what was wrong with it. There are two batteries. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just the one main battery. Well, one is the starting battery, the other is the running battery. So when it doesn't just instantly turn on, I have to go left and that electronically engages the accessory battery to jumpstart the car. So every time I've turned this left and complained about it, it's complete operator error. Low battery, please start engine. I had no idea there were two batteries this whole time, and that's why I had to turn the key left. And that's why there were a bunch of lights on the dash because the car wasn't operating right because it didn't have the correct voltage to the car. So I'm gonna replace a battery and see if all this changes. All right, stupid car, let's figure this out. Those are both loose, but look at how connected to everything. Like, look at how many things are connected to a dang battery, and it's it's in there freaking tight too. And then look at all the corrosion. So I didn't even know that battery was there this whole time. We're gonna change that battery and see what happens. How the heck do I even change this battery? I don't even I don't even know. This is why these stupid cars are so expensive to work on, because you need to know how to work on them. I don't understand why the alarm is going off. The freaking negative terminal is disconnected on both batteries. Where is the power coming from? I have two batteries with no power to them, and somehow there's still power to the car. What is happening here? The key is stuck in the ignition, the alarm is still going off, and there's no power to the car. How is it still happening? Just, you gotta know how to work on Bentley, I guess. Honestly, I'm at a loss. I have two completely disconnected batteries on both sides, positive, negatives, on two batteries. The alarm is still going off on this thing. I can't figure it out. Early the next morning. All right, let's try this, day two. I ordered the wrong battery yesterday. Apparently that was a good battery, so I didn't need that new battery. That battery was the dead battery. So I got a new battery for there. We're gonna try it, attempt number two but technically 14 because of how many times I've tried this so let's put the new battery in and see if I fix all the problems what's wild is how long this thing held the charge even with the batteries disconnected this thing still beeped at me this morning guess what she's a purring she sounds like a jet listen to this car run it's insane it sounds like exactly it sounds like a jet so I'm still having window issues but both batteries are in and it's running, I'm gonna reset all the monitors, clear everything out, and I'm gonna drive it today. And then everything should kind of reset, recalibrate, and get itself back into place. And here we go, now you guys all get to stare at my crotch while we look at our codes. Pass, no faults, almost all the way up. So there we go, 100%, we are gold. And look at that, just like that, rear window works now. So I think we're good, I'm gonna drive it for the day. Yep, it's sealed. I'm gonna drive her for the day. I think everything's recalibrated or recalibrating. Guess what? Filling up the Bentley again with gas. Again. But I'll tell you what, even premium is less expensive than diesel fuel right now, so it's less expensive to fill the Bentley finally than it is my Denali. I have to say, I'm, I'm gonna miss this car a little bit. It's been a nice ride. It's been fun. It's been classy. It's been comfortable. It turns heads. It's done everything I expected it to do, and it's fast. And honestly, it's been pretty reliable. It has started for me every time. I mean, I've had all those headaches that you've seen, which seem to just be battery related, which shame on me. I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to move on with this Ferrari flip. But I got really, really attached to this car. I can't believe it. So here's the fun part, driving the Bentley to my son's school to pick him up and every kid looks at the car. I enjoy that because I would have loved to look at this car in high school and middle school, which is probably why I enjoy it so much. Like these are cars I would have absolutely smiled and drooled over if these had driven into my parking lot. No, I dropped my key. <laughs> Can you get that? My leg, my arms won't fit through there. Okay. Told ya. Yeah, Thank you. Purpose. No, I didn't. You know what's crazy? I picked you up in this car during oh soccer God. in the fall, and now it's baseball in the spring. That's how long I've had this car. All right, I brought our new car. It's up to you to figure out which one it is. Is it the Bentley? 
<laughs> you got a Bentley? Oh. Too long. I never thought of that. I'm gonna miss it though. Wait, are you selling it? Yeah. They get sold already? Yeah, we'll see. So the third brake light is out also on the Bentley. So it just pries up pretty easily. If I bend it like this, it's gonna snap. But I've just been slowly kind of prying it up. I don't wanna crack the windshield. I don't wanna scratch the paint. But slowly, I can just kind of put some pressure and it pops up. And then I can try to diagnose and figure out why the lights aren't working on the third brake light. They were. And just like that, third brake light is fixed and it just pops right in. It's pretty simple. Talk about Bentleys being difficult. I think it's just a myth. Everything's pretty simple. The weird thing though, the glove box was dangling a little bit and yeah, we're good. We are gold. We have a third brake light. The, the glove box, you can see the fuse panels right here. The glove box was pried down a little bit. It's because people were pulling it to try to pry it down. So here's something kind of neat about the Bentley. You'll see the fuse panel right here, and there's a trim cover that goes over that, obviously, to make it uniform and clean. Now, most trim panels pop off with just some pop clips. So you just pry it down, it pops off, and then you're done. Well, with Bentley, they all lock in place. And there's a latch, so you can see this latch right here. So what happens is you pull the latch, it opens up right here and right here, and the trim panel actually pops down on hinges that are right here. If you don't know that, you pull it down thinking it's clipped in and everything breaks, which someone did prior to purchase. So you can see this is broken right here, and then it was cracked right here. So I repaired the cracks there. I put some washers in to enlarge the screws that are holding it in place. And now this piece is up in place without it being broken. So I'm hoping that trim panel can go back up and not have this gap that was right here that was annoying me the whole time I owned it. Heads up, inside a car. If you have ever been in this position, you know my pain, my anguish. Trying to set everything up under here and screw in screws. This is not easy. Pull the lever and see what happens. Boom. Ah, I did it! I fixed it! I feel, oh man, I still have a gap though, that stinks. Well, I really don't like this gap right here. It's been like this since I bought the car. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix it. And it's, I can't think of it any other way, because if you look deep in there, that plastic connector is broken already. There's nothing I can do about this. So I took a drill bit, and I drilled from the inside. So once this panel comes down, I took a drill bit and drilled out, not in. And then I shaved off the leather because obviously it pulled some leather out. So now I have a hole from here to here. And I took this self-tapper and I drilled it right through the plastic and it holds it in place. But the self-tapper was old and I really didn't want just like a stainless steel tapper sticking out of the trim. So with some blue, I took some blue and painted the entire thing so it's color matched to the car. We're going to let it dry and then I'm going to screw that in and it's going to hold that right in place and it really shouldn't look out of the ordinary too badly. Now it's in place. And that isn't ugly. That is not, that is like extremely presentable for what it was. There's no more gap anymore. I really like that. I really like that. Just like that, everything is shined up. So I conditioned the leather. I got everything, made it nice and clean, nice and shiny, and put some dealer floor mats in so it's nice and clean and now the interior is done so we did an oil change oh by the way the Phaeton oil filter is not the same so don't listen to me you got to get your own Bentley Continental GT oil filter so we did a synthetic oil change the problem is my mechanic called in for 040 and they didn't have it so he had to order mobile one by the court cost me $11 a quart, 150 bucks in just oil. But now we can list this thing up for sale. But I also have someone from like the other side of the country interested in buying this thing. I sent him some videos, I sent him some photos, and they're seriously interested in it. So it's kind of like whichever happens first. Are they gonna pay me? They need financing, are they gonna pay me? Or is it gonna go up on cars and bids? So whatever, we're gonna list it on cars and bids right now and see how it goes. Before we list it, I just wanna show you something. So I've driven it a couple hundred miles, We've done a bunch of repairs. There are no longer any lights on the dash. And watch this. When I take the key and put it in, put on the brake, it starts 
without me having to turn it left and then right. So once again, one of you guys that reached out and told me that in the comments, it's appreciated. Everything is completely back to normal, the way it should be, and I can sell this thing. I think we're finally done with this thing. Well, here's Cars and Bids. I've never actually used this website. Cars and Bids is owned by the famous YouTuber Doug Demuro. It's very similar to eBay. Let's try this out. So I already have an account set up. You can see they have all kinds of cool cars, especially that Corvette right there, which is really tempting because I actually have that same car and I don't want to sell it. Never mind. Let's keep moving on. Tons of fun stuff all the way up and all the way down. Easy to try out. Just click sell your car. And apparently it's free to sell on cars and bids. I've never really tried it, but you can see right here it says selling is free. Apply in five minutes. Once I click sell your car, it says tell us about your car so you can choose whether you're a dealer or a private seller. Enter my personal information, my dealer's license, the VIN, year, make, model, mileage, uh, a description about your vehicle, and then right after I do this, I upload a bunch of photos, and then we just wait. I got an instant response in my email just stating that they have received it and a representative will be in touch with us shortly. Now, I also have an Aston Martin that I wanna sell, so I listed that for sale as well. That's a whole other video but I did list the Bentley and the Aston Martin, both on Cars and Bids. Now I have some bad news. I did receive an email the next morning from a representative on Cars and Bids that told us they could only offer us $23,000 as a reserve, which means if the car sells for $23,000, we take a loss because I own that car for over $28,000. The good news, however, is the Aston Martin was accepted and accepted at $40,000, which is what we own that car for. Now, I'd love to make a profit. I'm not in the business to break even. A break even point is a loss, but I got to drive an Aston Martin. We got to make some fun videos with it. And if we break even, I mean, I'd really love to sell it, but at least we can try it on Cars and Bids and see how we do. Now, don't click away just yet because I have some really great news that is a complete coincidence. Oh man, I have some great news. I think the Bentley sold. I didn't, wasn't sure if this guy was real or if it was fake. I just got paid $33,000 for the Bentley. The Bentley is officially sold. Like it's here, but paperwork is filed, signed, sent back to me. Wire has already been sent to me. We just sold the Bentley for $33,000. What like a weird switcheroo of a video. And I swear this is real. It all happened the same week. The cars and bids was my intention and someone else bought this car the same week. It's wild. I, I swear this was not planned. All right, not only did we just sell the Bentley, but I have some really crazy news, and this is completely coincidental, I swear. I swear this is not planned. Today we sold my Audi A8 out. I love this car. Like, I wasn't worried about selling the Bentley because I had this car, and I love it more than the Bentley. But now we sold the Bentley, and the Audi sold for $30,000. So, we're gonna go hunting. In the next video, we're gonna go. We gotta go car shopping, seriously, because I love my toys. I can't not have that Bentley. And man, I kind of don't want to sell this now. Oh, on a completely different note, check out this '95 Mustang with 80,000 miles. Sneak preview to a video auction video coming up, like kind of soon. Let's go over the numbers and see how we actually did on this Bentley. I gotta say, I can't believe the Bentley and the Audi sold in the same week. Like, it seems like I'm making this stuff, I, I swear. I'm not making it up. The Bentley and the Audi sold in the same week as I was planning on listing that on Cars and Bids while I was shooting this video. I'm in the Aston Martin now because I have to get used to driving this thing. So we bought this Bentley for $24,750 from the Virginia Auto Auction back in like September or October. The buyer's fee was $1,980, which is just astronomical. But because it was a classic car and specialty sale, they had a stupid buyer's fee on it. $600 to ship it to me. A windshield was $1,400. Our oil change, I spent $150 on oil alone. I had to replace that battery. That was $169. And the rest was just like my own time, my own labor. So I owned this car now, not this one, that one, for $29,049, which is pretty good. I mean, like I, I own a Bentley for $29,000. That's pretty awesome. And everything I've learned about that car, I was able to fix myself. We can maintain it on our own. It seems like it's really difficult, but you just have to know the car because it's quirky. Once you learn it, you can do everything yourself. It's nuts and bolts and screws. So just I did it all in-house. Now I sold it for $33,000. 33,000 minus 29,049 means I have a profit of $3,951. That is pretty cool to say I made almost $4,000 in seven months 
and got to drive the Bentley. So I drove a Bentley and got paid almost $4,000 for it. So to say that out loud is really, really cool. But it also tied up $29,000. I could have used that money over and over and over and bought and sold things that were significantly easier to sell and made way more than $4,000 in seven months. So you have to think logically that wasn't really a wise investment on a car, but I didn't need the money. It was tying up our Ferrari money. So like I didn't need to keep using it on things because we had cheaper cars that we were buying and selling. Now, as far as return goes, that's an 11.9% return. Now, to tie up 30 grand to make just under 12% is, I mean, in the stock market, that's good. But in the car business, that's a low return. That's a lot of money to tie up for a 12% return. But it's still better than I'd ever see in any bank account. Now, I've said it before and I've talked about it before. That starting my own car dealership is one of the best things I've ever done because I'm financially free, which is really cool. I'm also self-employed, meaning I'm my own boss, which is also really cool. And to share that, I've created a program called StartYourDealership.com. If you ever want to learn how to start your own dealership, I mean, think about it. I drove a Bentley and made a 12% return. That's really, really cool. I made $4,000 on one car and drove it for four or five months. If you ever wanted to learn how to do those things for real, like get your license and, and really do everything as far as taxes and business and advertising and everything else goes, startyourdealership.com and carflipping101.com, two really, really cool programs. I just wanted to shout those out. You guys have to check them out. We also have private Facebook groups and mastermind programs and challenges to keep everybody motivated. It's really, really cool. You guys gotta go check it out with links down below. Now let's talk about the Ferrari Flip progress. You'll see I have no Suzuki Grand Vitara, no Honda Civic Si, and no Toyota Tundra. All those cars, like those were the last three cars, sold. So we have a surplus of money. The Grand Vitara sold and I bought the Civic. The Civic sold for 10.5. I bought the Toyota Tundra months ago. That sold and I have $12,000 to go to the auction with. So I'm not even going to spend this Bentley money yet. I'm just going to push it aside. Unless I see something really, really amazing at the auction, who knows, then maybe we'll buy them. But for now, I'm going to go to the auction next week with $12,000 to see what we can come up with. And I just don't know how to use this system now. Like it was nice tying up all the money and then just buying inexpensive cars. Like we didn't start with a lot and then we now have like 20 something thousand dollars from the, from the Tundra and the Civic, like $22,000. So we have 33,000 here plus 22 from the Tundra and the Civic. So we have like $55,000 now. We're in real Ferrari territory. We have $55,000. Should I just take the whole 55 now that everything's liquidated and just go buy something for 55,000? I don't know, I would love to, but it, again, doesn't make much sense because I can hang on to it. The good thing is it's spring, so I could buy a toy for 55 grand and see what we come up with and then just have a blast with it until it sells. But I really like making the videos too. So if I just spend all the money and hang on to it, then this series is over again and we get tied up and I don't wanna do that. What do you guys think I should do? For now, I'm gonna get going because I've been talking for a long, long time. Thanks for sticking with me. This project is so much fun. I've had a Bentley and I've had some really, really cool cars. I wish this Aston was part of the project, but it's not. I guess I could push the money over to the Aston and buy it with the Ferrari Flip money and then the Aston is part of the Ferrari Flip too. I would love to hear what you guys say. Tell me in the comments down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, guys, Subscribe, what's the deal? Hit the button right below. It's like right in the bottom corner somewhere. As a favor to me, if you hit the thumbs up, that, that just helps the algorithm so more people get to see my video so I can make content for all you guys. And a special thanks to Avalon King for help sponsor this video. Remember, shout them out in the comments down below, like the video, subscribe, and one of you guys is gonna win some ceramic coating from Avalon King as well. Thanks for watching, I'll see y'all later. Adios. Hey everyone, once again, thanks for watching. I know this was a really, really long one, so if you've made it this far, I really appreciate your support. I hope it was entertaining, educational, and fun for you to watch. I'm having an absolute blast with this Ferrari Flip series. I hope you are too, and I love to read all of your comments, so make sure to tell me your opinions down below. See you later.